divine truth theme discussions, discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. The title of this discussion is Premature Death from Pregnancy, Miscarriage or Abortion, where Jesus and Mary discuss Nathan, a young Australian boy who died prematurely before birth in 1990 from a pregnancy miscarriage. The difficulties faced by spirits who must help over 100 million children dying every year and the extreme level of denial on earth about the effects and causes of these problems. The session was recorded on the 17th of October 2017 from 11.40 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So last time it was a little girl who came to us, wasn't it? Yeah, about that? a year ago. It was about a year ago. Yeah. And she came initially and she had a really um, happy kind of a facade on, didn't she? Yeah. Which you sort of saw through. But the way she presented to me was really like bubbly and I'm just here and I just want to help people. and I just and want to be happy and help everyone on earth be happy. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that was her, what she felt. And then you um, talked to her for a very brief little bit mm. and um, she immediately felt a lot sadder. Mm. Um, and it was her first time I from memory her first time actually being able to come closer to the earth because her and a whole group of kids had been miscarried on earth and the whole um they were taken very quickly to a place uh in the spirit world that from the impression she gave me it was like a huge sort of a hospital ward where the kids were um almost semi-conscious um, because and almost sedated by the people, their carers to mm. try and help them separate from, because there's such a strong emotional pull from, for that group, especially the mothers mm. towards the child, that the child be with the mother. And, yeah. and that was part of the reason you helped her see why they'd miscarried in the first place, because there was such an intense um, demand from their mothers. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so they were in this kind of hospital situation, it felt like, where they were just being nursed for years and years, really, mm -hmm. because they felt so terrible. Uh, for most of them, it was over 20 years. Yeah. 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 The, it's, it's probably good for our viewers to just say some basic uh, things first about miscarriages. Yeah. One is that there's anywhere from 50 million to 150 million miscarriages every year. Um, on the on the earth with seven and a, or eight close to eight billion people on earth now um, there's a there's close there's anywhere from 50 to 150 million miscarriages every year so that's a huge amount of work that is created in the spirit world to look after these children who mm -hmm. all have very very similar injuries mm -hmm. and the injuries relate around the mother and father and particularly the mother's need to have children to validate their own life. Mm. So inside of most women at this point in time on earth, there is a very strong need for them to become a mother. Mm. And, and this need is driven by a lot of uh, mo uh, selfish motivations, particularly relating to things like um, feeling like unless they are a mother, they have no value. Mm. And so they need to become a mother. And then this then places the children um, in a state where the children are just there for the parents' sake. Mm. And, and because of these very demanding emotions placed upon the children, many children are so sensitive to these emotions and the emotions are so intensely unloving mm. from God's perspective that the child uh, can no longer sustain a connection, its soul connection to its own bodies and that, or its own physical body. Yeah. And as a result, the child miscarriages yeah. and, uh, and then arrives in the spirit world, in the first sphere of the spirit world, yeah. with a whole lot of quite harsh emotions to address because usually immediately after the miscarriage, a lot of parents try to have another child mm. and then dis uh, and have no desire to connect to the child that was just miscarried. Yeah, so what I found the difference was, mm -hmm. um, so, so for this Nathan, group, could, Nathan could start to see that, 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 
whereas the first girl, I forget her name, Mindy or something, she, her, um, she was at a point where she wasn't yet aware that the parents had moved on emotionally Well, not only that, the parents her. had not moved on emotionally. Right, yeah. The parents still had this so deep, like, pull fit, need her. and pull towards those children. So some, yeah. some mothers who have miscarriages never forget their miscarried yeah. child, which I'm not suggesting they should, but, but there's a strong need and, the, and there's a huge amount of grief in the mothers about, oh, that child was not with me and, yeah. you know, and, and not understanding, of course, that yeah. it was these kind of emotions that repelled the child in the first place. Yes. And, and so that's like, that's like one group of miscarriages relate to these needy projections from their mothers in particular yeah. um, that never stop even yeah. after they've passed. Yeah, so so the, the situation for those, Mindy's group was that they were sedated for this really long time before they could, otherwise the, they had a male helper as well. Mm -hmm. And, it and they had to have a male helper. Because the, the injuries with the mother were so pronounced in the children, and they cried the entire, like... Yeah, they was, couldn't even, uh, they didn't, they hadn't met any females in the spirit world yep. until the time that we discussed things with them. Yes, yes. yeah, because the, the hurt, I suppose it was, that they had with their mothers was so intense, wasn't it? Yes. And so they'd been kind of ho hospitalised and it was like they were physically sick as well, almost from the emotional pain of it. Well, not only that, and there's a lot of sucking of emotion from the child yes. to the adult and the children are so open to that sucking emotion. And so it depletes, uh, it actually is an energy getting sucked out of their mm. body, their spirit body sucked mm. away from their soul constantly and so they feel quite uh, distraught with it it's a very very low energy hard to get anything done they, it's very hard for them to even wake up mm. because it, it, they're so weak and tired and the energy system but eventually the spirits helping them have to get them to wake up uh, otherwise they can't educate them and, yes. and stop the energy leaks if you like yep. they're going back to their parents on earth yeah and that's right and so if I remember, you probably remember better than me, the later parts of it, because that was just my initial impressions. But I think that um, the reason why Mindy was in such a happy facade is that now she was kind of, they'd, her group had moved to this waking up phase that they're starting at education with their male helper. Um, and she felt that her job really was to live for, for other people. So that's the residual emotion that yes. she was still trapped in from her parents. Yes. Um, so now she had to live just to cheer people up. Yes. And it, you kind of broke through that veneer and then she, she connected to just how sorrowful she was really about it, mm. it was a similar feeling though. What is my purpose worth? Then? And I have nothing mm. if I'm not this if person's I'm, child and also if i'm not cheering up people yeah then i've got no purpose of living yes. is also what she felt and they were having a hard time weren't they actually now that they were more awake there was still a pull towards the earthly parents wasn't there and they were having a problem not just being with them all the time trying to give them this feeling like you're a good mom you're a good dad you're a good yeah dad. their spirit helper was trying to keep them away constantly yeah. from their their earth-based mum and dad yeah. um, because of those sucking emotions which yeah. drew the children back into the family life on earth, which is very, uh, really, from God's perspective, very abusive, mm. emotionally abusive. And so, you know, the spirit helper was trying to keep, mm. keep those children away from their mm. parents until such a time as the children could actually feel that they were individuals mm. and had a, had a life of their own. Mm. which was difficult, of course, because, and that's why he brought them to us because, yes. you know, he, he wanted some help in terms of helping those children break away properly from their parents on earth enough to have a life of their own. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that's similar to Nathan's group, isn't it? It's just that... Um, yeah, there's his, always these connections between the miscarried yeah. children and their parents. Yeah. Always. But what we've got to you know for different reasons in yeah. nathan in the group that we just dealt with nathan's group of children a lot of that was about the parents 
um, firstly having a very strong neediness for the child so much yes. so that the child got repul repulsed out of the womb mm. and then and then completely forgetting the child got kind of yeah it was sort of that they the child was a commodity that child was miscarried so we'll just get another have another child and yes. that had happened somehow much more rapidly than in the Mindy's group case or it was a different emotional signature in the parents. Well, I don't know if it happened more rapidly. Like, we're talking about events that happened close to 30 years ago for Nathan. Yeah. Um, so, you know, over that time, obviously, his parents eventually dealt with some emotion enough to yeah. hold on to a child in the womb. Mm. So, obviously, the parents at least dealt with some emotion regarding well, that. It's interesting, isn't it, because often... I've heard it said that women will miscarry on their first pregnancy, but I suppose in that happening, some emotion is dealt with. Uh, um, you know, it depends on the woman. If if she's willing to, you know, cry and grieve the loss yeah. of the child, oftentimes she will start connecting to some feelings that she has about why why she desperately needs to have mm -hmm. children. Um, you know, that, that's frequently the case. And then, of course, that then helps with the next pregnancy. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, though, uh, for many, that doesn't happen. And so they have many, many pregnancies end in miscarriages. Mm. Mm. And then um, on top of that, unfortunately, um, you know, oftentimes those kind of people generally revert to even things like, you know, some kind of artificial means of obtaining a child, which all usually involve frozen embryos and so forth, which then has a whole series of miscarriages occurring. Mm. as a result of this desperate need to have a child. Mm. Uh, and all of those little children have all got emotions that they're going to need to address mm. in the spirit world uh, about use being used like this kind of commodity. Yeah. Mm. I suppose it's also possible that the mother receives enough validation in having the first pregnancy so she has the addiction met enough in the first pregnancy that somehow the second pregnancy is less uh again it depends taking. it yeah. depends on the injury on of the, the mother and the environment that she's in exactly yes. you know if in in environments of old mm -hmm. many times a person who miscarried was viewed as less of a woman yes and therefore often that triggered further miscarriages mm -hmm. and further denial of emotion mm. and so it just depends on what happens in terms of the child's mother and mm. what you know her condition is at the time mm. she's she conceives mm. and and unfortunately for many and it is actually getting worse on the earth um mm. there is an increasing number of miscarriages on earth and as a result as a result of these specific emotions so you're saying in saying that then that the injury of the need for a woman or the the couple to have in particular it's the woman most men have less of a desire well that is, no, historically that's not the case no. it, historically it was more even balance uh, because many men historically wanted to have children for the sake of having a lineage for having you know uh, a sub you know a lineage mm -hmm. to leave on the earth if you like and but but more and more men are not having that idea or concept anymore more in particularly in western society but more and more women are still in desperate need of having children to yeah, so you're themselves as mothers so so you're saying really that that is not decreasing because um populist culture would say it is but uh, i agree with you but i just wanted to clarify no and you can there. see you can see it's not decreasing based on the the lowering age of sexual maturity that are occurring in women. Mm. This is all occurring as a direct result of the woman needing to be sexual mature at an earlier age because of the unhealed emotions relating to the need to become a mother in order to prove herself as a woman. Um, and yet women are in, in Western societies having children at a much later age. So they're developing... Because I would also associate the sexual development with the need to be a sexual, a sexualized being in order to get validation. Is that also no? It's primarily of related to need to be a mother. But right. but you see, most women nowadays, particularly in Western society, are leaving it later because 
they want to have a financially secure life where they don't want to have to rely on a man to be financially secure. Mm. And so there are other emotions also which are mm. playing the part as to why many women now are delaying mm. pregnancy. But most women still feel like they need to have a child. And if a woman does not have a child all of her life, she is frequently looked down upon by other women in particular. Definitely. So it is very much uh, an injury relating to obtaining the approval of other women mm. in order to prove yourself as a woman. Yeah. And, uh, you know, men have other reasons for obtaining approval from their fathers, but very rarely it's having children, um, whereas mother, you know, women generally have a lot of desire to have children uh, in order to obtain approval from the other women in their life. Yeah, mm. yeah. Nice. But all of those emotions play terribly on the on the child, obviously. Yeah. And, that, and that's what we're talking about here. The mm. children themselves are severely affected. We had a recent discussion a few weeks ago, as I mentioned at the beginning, um, and that's on recording only, but... Audio, yeah. Audio only, but, you know, again, uh, another a number of children who were severely affected by um, the parents' emotional condition yeah. uh, being projected at them at very young ages, mm. so much so that they all passed before obtaining any any maturity at all yes mm -hmm. so um perhaps if because i know some of our viewers have had miscarriages and have asked specifically about the emotions involved and and um repentance about that issue i suppose they've asked me about um the main issue you're saying is the creation of the miscarriage is the strong investment in the mother particularly well no i think it's wrong to state the one emotion that has, has, sure. has effect the reality is there's hundreds of different emotions that have an effect on a miscarriage yep. but every one of them is a result of a lack of love on the part of one or both parents mm -hmm. And would you say it's correct to say there's a strong flavour of investment in having the child to fulfil a sense of purpose or role for the parent? Always. One of those parents. Yeah. Always a strong flavour of that. But there's all different reasons why they yes. might have that. I see. Um, you know, some of it uh, has been created because of, they need approval from others. Mm -hmm. Some of it is for personal self-validation. Some of it is for quite warped concepts of longevity. You know, the way I live forever is through my children. Yeah. Some of it's relating to being looked after in your old age, the need yeah. to have someone to care for you. Yeah. The Some of it's uh, related to the concepts that are now developing on earth about the most purest love is the mother's love. Yeah. Uh, you know, rather than the most purest love actually being the soul, soulmate love. Yeah. And, and so forth. There are, there are many, many injuries mm -hmm. that cause a person to, to degrade their condition so much in love that, that they can no longer hold on to a child in the womb. Mm -hmm. um, and, and many of those injuries are multi-generational, so mm -hmm. not just within the parent, but also in the parents prior to mm -hmm. this generation. So. And presumably the gender also plays a role as well because of course. I know that some little kids that I've spoken to was particularly, like I think in Nathan's case, I'm not sure, the fact that he was a boy and some of the emotions in his parents towards boys meant that he wasn't, um, no, that's not Nathan, but somebody that I've felt around and spoke with me about it, that it's very, um, you know, and I can think of women on earth that I've known where they only carry boys to term, but girls they can't. or vice yeah, versa. Or vice versa. Yeah. yeah. And historically in the in you know times before the nineteenth and twentieth century, it, it was more difficult usually to carry girls than boys. Mm. Um, but but as time has progressed, it's becoming a lot easier for some to carry girls rather than boys. Yeah. Uh, due to different emotional injuries that exist in society as a whole and the individual mum yeah. and dad at the time. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. Yeah. So there's a lot of very complex emotions that are actually causing the problem. Mm. And uh, but you know what? One of the things we've been doing is trying to help some of the little yeah. girls and boys who who are yeah. who are still after twenty or thirty years, they still haven't developed beyond their childhood. That's what I found striking in both cases was that there's such a long period, and there there was also mm. I remember in Mindy's group as well 
a strong feeling that they needed to remain children because that's how they were viewed. That that's, that's how they viewed their worth. And of. that's how they get their parents' approval yeah. or how they meet their parents' demands. Yeah. 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 Strong need to remain children. Yeah. And unless that uh, bond between their earth parents and themselves is broken emotionally, yeah. frequently they can't progress at all. Yeah. until that bond is broken. Yeah. So, so you can imagine you, is, that, that there's a huge amount of work mm -hmm. when you consider that on the average more than 50 million of these children arrive in the spirit world every year. Mm -hmm. You imagine that's a huge amount of work. You have people, yeah. there's literally millions of people like Jeremy helping a team, helping, you know, teams mm -hmm. of children, you know, yeah. where there are 20, 30, 40 or 50 children are being helped by one helper because there's just not enough people to be able to help the amount of children that are passing yeah. in this condition. Yeah. Mm. Poor little tuckers. Mm. And if, if, say, I was a mother on earth who'd had a miscarriage, I would be working on uh, looking at the specific, specific uh, underlying um, emotions that cause me to have a strong desire for a child and to actually take from a child rather than give to one. Or yes, and also examine all of the emotions associated with the reason why you want children before you go ahead and have one. Yeah. Um, because, uh, you know, often the reasons are very selfish yeah. and selfishly motivated yeah. and have nothing to do with the little children being a unique personality that needs help to develop. Yeah. And uh, and unfortunately, many parents uh, are in this in in today's ages with regard, particularly in the Western society, mm -hmm. many parents are engaging a lot of very poor parenting decisions yeah. and, and causing many many problems not only for their unborn children but also for their actual children that do survive yeah. by engaging a lot of these kind of unloving behaviours. Mm. Unfortunately, it's like. Um, it's like a taboo to even talk about it. Yeah. Because yeah. because most of most parents become quite violent when you suggest to them that any past passing of a miscarried child has to do with their demands placed upon a child. But Absolutely. that is actual fact. Because and, most uh, unfortunately most of them want to deny it. Yeah, they do. And if I think about um, in my parents' case, uh, they had three miscarriages aside from the two kids that they had, one mm -hmm. of them being me, um, had in, like being born. Um, and their, their beliefs about children is that they love children, they want to give to children, they're, they're all about the children. And it's often and, these kind of parents that have <laughs> yeah. the most amount of miscarriages. And so you can understand why it's confronting because it's basically flipping their whole story, which is... Which is only their um, sort of self-concept. Yes. You know, their whole self-concept is being challenged. Yeah. And that's the whole reason why they're getting angry about it. Yeah. But, yeah. but the reality is, yeah, if you examine a family where the majority of children have miscarried, yeah. and there are many like that, yeah. um, you can see that there must be very, very strong demands in both parents yeah. to have caused such a thing to occur. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I know that having still some of that emotional signature, I get quite, um, it's quite confronting for me to, to channel these kids, not only because some of the emotions resonate, but also because I know how confronting it is for parents who have had miscarriages to hear to this hear stuff. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this is one reason why most mediums on earth never channel uh, children who right. have miscarried. Yeah, because it's going to confront so a lot of mediums on earth have a lot of addictions with the people, other people on earth that they're channeling for. Of course, because they? they do mediumship for, 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 for money. For money. Usually, yeah. And obviously, you know, if you're doing that, you want to please the person who yeah. you're doing the mediumship for, which is not necessarily a desire for truth yeah. to be told. And unfortunately, most people on earth also have no concept whatsoever about emotional condition causing certain things that occur. And so you add those two problems together and basically nobody has much to say about what's happening to these huge yeah. amount of miscarried children. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great, it's worse than war on earth, to be frank. There's less people who die on earth from war than there are from miscarriages. Yeah. And so this should demonstrate the severity of the problem. Mm -hmm. The fact is that uh, people who die from war far, are far less in number. Yeah. than the people who die from miscarriages 
and yet they arrive with very similar emotional scars mm. and uh, and and the ch poor children who who die unfortunately are almost like a forgotten uh, part of society if mm. you like and this is why it's very very difficult for them to even deal with some of these emotions it being anywhere near the earth uh, if they ever came anywhere near the earth it's very very difficult for them mm. to even address the emotion whereas a person who has died from a war people around them can often grieve them mm. and often feel for them and often see that what happened was wrong. And so many of them find it much easier, in fact, mm. to actually work through their emotions of their death than a child who has died from a miscarriage does. Mm. Mm. And that was one of the things that Mindy experienced was that there was so much grief in her mother on earth, but it wasn't actually anything to do with her it was to do with her as a it was to do with her mother's commodity. loss of yes. the commodity yeah her her mother's tantrum really of <laughs> yeah. having lost uh, uh, a child that the mother had the potential of actually validating the mother's own life yeah uh, using the child to validate the mother's own life yeah. so yeah it's very sad and as i said it's a major problem in the spirit world yeah. uh having to have so many children arrive in this condition every year yeah. is a major problem in the spirit world and it's a far more difficult problem to solve than uh, people even dying from war mm. on earth yeah and, and that's confronting isn't it like when you think about the number of people who are passing from miscarriage for just for example but <clears throat> it's interesting that you said the type of emotional scars and wounds that these people passing say from a war and miscarriage have well can we also not just include miscarriage here because there's also abortion, abortion. which is yeah. obviously a purposeful desire to yeah. miscarry so the child even more and there's another 50 million of those every year yeah. that are purposefully yeah. engaged that are recorded that we and know then there's about. another yeah, yeah another nearly 100 million a year of those that happen through other abortive processes that yeah. occur so, you know, yeah. altogether there is close to 200, 200 250 million people, children dying every year. Yeah. Uh, but most of them are not recognised as deaths because they all happen prior to the child being born. Mm. Uh, and so, so are you then, um, does that necessarily mean that the parent who, so the parent who aborts a child, the parent who has a miscarriage and the soldier who who kills someone in battle are you saying that the emotional condition of each of those three people is if the if the scars of the people um passing i feel response... you you want to get into these comparisons all the time but everything yeah. is unique it's like I see. and i see people doing this a lot with me in groups you know yep. where they want to get into these comparisons but every situation is unique there are people who have aborted a child certainly have very, very strong reasons for deciding in their own mind that it's okay to terminate a life mm. because that life has yet to exhibit itself in a flesh and blood being yep. that's separate to themselves. Yeah. Uh, and so there are huge numbers of, of emotions and also justifications in that belief mm -hmm. system. But when it comes to miscarriage, there's mostly it's to do with a lot of misunderstanding about, about things. So it's less, you could say it's less purposeful but there are very severe emotions in the parents that they're not addressing that need to be addressed. But that is a lack of more, a lack of education than any other problem. Whereas the issue with regard to the soldiers killing another thing, another person, person. Is, a, is a lot to do with a number of different issues regarding law, society, government, a religion and, uh, and poli you know, politics things. and all sorts of different issues yeah. can play in uh, the reason why we might go to war to, to kill another person. Yeah, I, I just posed that question because I could, because you'd made a comparison to the injuries, I thought naturally some of our viewers might then draw a comparison to the... To the um, yeah, well, there, there are comparisons, certainly. Yeah. There are things that are similar attitudes that mm. you can certainly see for different reasons, though, usually motivated by different reasons. So my desire to, to destroy another life can come from lots of different causes. Yes. But in the end, the net result is the life yeah. is destroyed. And yeah. the person whose life is destroyed on earth has certain feelings about that yeah. having happened. Now, obviously, if the life that's been destroyed on earth is a child or not even or even an unborn child, yeah. then uh, those children have a lot more severe 
issues to address because of their lack of development yeah. and therefore more you know, higher intensity emotional state where of they can't. the people who are aborted. Yeah, well, they can't yeah. reason for themselves as to why their parents might have chosen such an action. Yeah. They only can feel the emotions. Yeah. Whereas a person who dies in battle can at least reason for himself, well, he was on the battlefield <laughs> yeah. and he did have a gun in his hand and yeah. he was trying to kill somebody. And, yes. you know, he can at yes. least go through some of those reasonings himself, yeah. whereas a child frequently can't do that. And I, I so suppose also that it's like... A lot of people who have miscarriages would say that their emotions are almost the opposite to someone who would abort a child and that they feel like they need and really desperately want a child, um, whereas the person who has an abortion says, I definitely don't want this child. Um, but it's just... Uh, but both, both decisions are selfish. Yes. And therefore both are unloving from God's perspective. Yeah. And it's the selfish, unloving condition that yes. causes the miscarriage or the abortion Excellent. for whatever justification. And frequently people who have had abortions also have miscarriages. Mm. They've documented in fact that it's usually higher case mm. uh, of, of miscarriages through, you know, there's, there's document, uh, documented facts regarding the links between these two things. Uh -huh. And there's reasons for that too, because some of the emotional justifications are one, uh, both of them are related, are selfish motivations. Mm. So motivations are that are selfish. Yeah. They're going to have a more unloving condition associated with them, and therefore a higher likelihood that there will be an event that occurs, whether it be a choice like abortion mm -hmm. or what we feel is not a choice, a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. At the end, it has been driven by some deeper emotional conditions that are unloving. Mm. And we need to see that God made a perfect system, mm -hmm. which was that every woman would be able to carry the baby to full term, mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately that system is interfered with by the condition of both men and women on earth. And, and that unloving condition now determines what happens to the child, to the unborn child. Mm. Mm. But if you add up the miscarriages and abortions on earth yeah. that are documented even, yes. there, there's close to 100 million of those every year. Um, that's a lot of children to look after mm. a lot of new entries, if you like, mm. into the spirit world to look after who have not had any developed life and who do not understand why they have even had passed or any of these kind of things like an adult would. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Thank you for yeah. discussing all that. Yeah, it's a big problem, isn't it? And, and obviously a problem that is going to continue unless people on earth start to be a lot more self-reflective and get over their rage and anger at having the truth told to them about the matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, um, I think one of the reasons I believe that, say, the issue of abortion has become such a hot women's issue of like, we should have the right to choose is because there's so much shame heaped upon women. Uh, regarding sexuality and re in the past having a child out of wedlock and all of these things. And oftentimes I feel all of us women are carrying a lot of shame that we don't want to let go of and release. And so therefore they, these these topics become very emotive and very... Um, uh, yeah, but the woman's right to choose is driven by anger, not shame. So. That's what I mean. It's, it becomes very angry because the desire to not release past shame correct, and past correct. things. It, well, it comes from, again, again, you can oversimplify it. It yeah. comes from many hundreds of different emotions that a woman yes. might be suppressing, yes. right from not having security, yep. right the way through to shame and other Lots emotions. So, again, we can't, we can't sort of say, oh, there's this one particular emotion that has caused a person to have miscarriage or abortion. Um, it's frequently caused by a group of emotions mm -hmm. that are severe enough in intensity mm -hmm. to cause the woman to justify an action with regard to abortion yeah. or to cause the woman to believe that she desperately needs to have a child in order to validate her life. And, and all of those emotions are going to have to be addressed at some point. Yeah, and I guess the point I was going to make was just about uh, we're saying the truth about these things, not in order to generate more shame towards women who've had miscarriages or abortions, but rather to shine the light of, so it stops happening, basically, that people can actually be more educated. Yeah, well, you know, as I say, though, the motivations for miscarriage and abortion are different. Mm -hmm. And so, um, although often selfish, mm -hmm. and so what we need to do 
is, you know, at some point we will start discussing more of the motivations of each situation. By having different interactions with different people to explain their personal situation, you can sort of explain the per personal situation for each individual. Mm -hmm. There are a whole heap of problems on Earth that cause premature death mm -hmm. uh, for, him, for people who are living on Earth. But of course, the biggest two are abortion and miscarriage. Yeah. Um, and then probably the third biggest is malnutrition of children. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in other words, children are affected yeah. by the three biggest causes of death that occur on the planet. Yeah. A and, um, and of course, children are still affected, are probably the primarily affected by war. Yeah. But, but war is at least engaged by adults who have at least some of their own mind to decide what they're yes. going to do. Yeah. Uh, whereas, uh, unfortunately, the victims of war and also the victims of, of abortion yeah. and the victims, you could say, of miscarriage, although there's different causes, yeah. have all got nothing to say about the matter and therefore um, I often need more of our compassion. Yeah. And I think we've got to be very careful about having, like, while I do have compassion for the groups of emotions that cause these particular things, mm -hmm. we need to get very uh, clear about the fact that all of these emotions are unloving yeah. and all of them need to be changed. And the only way they're going to be changed is by the people involved, everyone on earth really, having an intention to change them. Mm -hmm. And unless everyone on earth has an intention to change them, these terrible uh, mass genocides which are occurring every year mm -hmm. and everybody ignoring them mm -hmm. will continue to occur. Yeah. And, and this is an unfortunate thing. And then of course there is the number of spirits who must look after these particular children who need to care for these particular children goes up every year mm -hmm. like because of their numbers of children involved. And it often is a 20 to 50 year project for those spirits to help those particular children in their care to to get to some level of self-awareness and some desire to actually connect with themselves and no longer be influenced by what was hap what happened on the earth during the formative years of their gestation their in, in the womb yeah. their development yeah. in the womb yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. all right so i feel uh, you know it's a good opportunity to talk about those things yeah. but but we need to be very careful about making blanket statements about the emotional conditions involved and uh, unless we are actually talking to someone specifically where mm -hmm. we can mention more the emotions that are involved with that specific individual. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we make blanket statements, that's not helpful for any person that needs to work through their emotions regarding the matter. They will need to do, they will need to do what they need to do personally to examine yes. their personal condition, to adjust their personal emotional condition in order to fix the problem. Yes, and... Um, <laughs> the the judgment and shame like the shaming of people associated with their particular lifestyles occurs often because there's blanket ideas or yeah but it's not only the judgment and shaming of people that cause things like abortion no it's, sorry it's <laughs> yeah, also i'm not but expressing I, myself well yeah yeah but if, i'm not meaning that no but i if i can explain yeah it, it, it's frequently the opposite emotion which is an anger-based emotion you know, if a person was feeling judgment or shame, they can just feel that without getting angry. And they could also feel I'm pregnant now and sure, I'm going to be shamed by everybody if I have the baby or whatever. Yeah. Or there's frequently their own shame, the fact that they engaged in a one night stand and, and now they're pregnant with that person's child and they don't necessarily like that person or whatever. Yeah. And there's their own shame, sure. But the, rea the reality is that there is still this feeling inside the person that I have the right to terminate another life. And that is yeah. an underlying emotional condition that is very, very dangerous to engage for any reason, including, you know, for the, for the purpose of having an abortion. Yeah. Um, when you feel you have the right to terminate somebody else's life without their choice being involved in the matter, now that demonstrates a very unloving condition that exists within yourself. And, and whatever the reasons are causing it, we need to address it. Yeah. 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 No, and I, I agree. And I feel Absolutely. it's very important that we don't, you know, give the impression to our listeners that, um, you know, that there's a whole heap of mitigating circumstances. From God's perspective, there are not. 
and and we need to address the actual emotions. Yeah. The primary, the, the, it seems to me there's two primary things, one that drives miscarriages and one that drives abortions when we boil down to the underlying facts about the matter. Yeah. The thing driving miscarriages emotionally is this. Most women believe a miscarriage is not their fault, right? And if they're told it's their fault, they will usually get very angry and very upset about it. Yeah. Now, I'm saying a miscarriage is the fault of both parents, mm -hmm. so not just the woman, mm -hmm. but both parents, for whatever reason. But sometimes the woman is more involved in the miscarriage than the man due to the emotional condition. And, and yet the average feeling driving most women who have a mis miscarriage is, it's not my fault. Why did somebody do this to me? What... You know, God's got a flawed system and now I'm paying the price for it is basically the underlying emotional feeling, mm. right? And this is wrong, completely wrong. It is the result of the parents involved as to why a person has a miscarriage, mm. right? Now, I'm not saying that in terms of the judge to the parent mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that to condemn the parents. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that the condition of love that exists in those parents has caused the miscarriage and God's laws are immutable on that fact. That's and, what I'm saying. And God God didn't instigate the miscarriage. And God didn't instigate the miscarriage. The parent's emotional condition, which has come from a lot of different various sources, mm -hmm. has instigated the miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And so when a person says, it's not my fault, they are not being truthful to themselves. Now, there's a difference between fault and blame and judgment. Yeah. We can correct the fault. Yes. So if a, if, a, if a family has one miscarried child, they can go, okay, we know that there's something inside of us that has caused this miscarriage. Let's have a sincere look at what is inside of me that's caused this particular miscarriage. Mm -hmm. So that, and that applies to both parents, so that we can now with our next child yes. have a completely different attitude to this child. Yes. Now, that would be the correct course of action with regard to miscarriages. But as I said, the real attitude on earth today regarding miscarriage is it's not my fault, some indetermined, unfortunate accident or God has taken my child away from me or some other explanation is there for my miscarriage. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where we're in complete error and therefore have no ability to change how many miscarriages are occurring on earth while we have that error emotionally. Yeah. So that's the issue of miscarriages. Yeah. Let's look at the issue of abortion. <laughs> the general feeling in most parent people when they have an abortion is that it's my right to terminate this life mm -hmm. for my own selfish purposes. Yes. Right? That is their underlying general attitude. And like, if anything, we should be ashamed of that attitude because mm. it is a terrible attitude to have mm. and we should have some shame about it. If we had any guilt or shame about it, we might not have the attitude. We might work on the attitude. Mm. But unfortunately, the average attitude on this planet with regard to abortion is go ahead and have one if you want one. Mm. Right. And in fact, there are whole movements now where with the right to the woman's own body. Yes. The right to choose. As if yep. this developing child is now is still a part of the woman's own body, which it is not from God's perspective. It is a, it is a child in its own right mm -hmm. developing in the womb of the woman. And, and this is the gift that God has given to women to be able to hold, you know, carry a child to term. Mm -hmm. And the desire to abort it is driven, sure, by many factors. And some of those factors are society-based. Some of those factors are personal, but in the end, it does boil down to this underlying feeling that the person has is I have the right, I desire to, I want to get rid of this child. I must get rid of this child. Yeah. And, and that emotional condition is very, very dark. Mm. It is, is just as dark as a person deciding to go off to war to kill somebody mm -hmm. for a personal reason. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just as dark as that. And, and we can't mince words about that, no. right? So, so while we're not trying to shame everybody here, we are trying to state the fact. And the fact is, abortions are caused by an attitude which says, I have the right to terminate your life. Mm -hmm. 
Miscarriages are uh, shaped by attitudes relating to, I have the right to have a child for me. Yes. All right. And I, and don't tell me that my miscarriage has anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. It must be something to do with anything else other than me, yeah. is, is the general feeling. Yeah. And both attitudes are completely wrong. Yeah. So unless these particular attitudes change, it's highly unlikely that these problems will change. Yeah. The amount of abortions occurring on the planet and the amount of miscarriages occurring on the planet are quite high mm -hmm. in terms of percentages. And we want, obviously, to see that change. Mm. Yeah. And the only way it's going to change is by people being truthful about the emotions that drive both actions. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. More truth. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. No worries. <laughs>